What's going on resellers, high beasts, and sneakerheads? My name is Duncan Beaumont, and in this video, I will be going over my top 10 sneakers to release in 2020. Obviously, we had a ton of heat release this year, so this was not an easy list to make. I did try to base this list on my personal opinions and put aside hype and things like that. So if you don't see a sneaker you liked on this list or you think a sneaker should have been higher up or lower on the list, definitely feel free to leave those comments down below. I do respect your guys' opinions, of course, but this list is gonna be mostly my opinions, my favorite sneakers, the sneakers I want in my collection. Obviously though, guys, we are still gonna have a lot of hype sneakers on this list because a big reason why sneakers are hyped up is because they do look so good. Again, guys, I just wanna mention that as we go through the list, feel free to leave your opinions down below that'd be awesome I'd love to see what you guys think of this list what your top 10 would be one more thing I do want to mention before we get into it for certain shoes I do have them grouped together for example Nike Dunks and Nike SBs I have those as a group so I am going to be showing you guys some of my favorite colorways from the group and things like that I'm not going to have like these strange loves at number one the Travis's at number two the Ben and Jerry's at number three because then we would have a list full of these same shoes so I'm going to put those into categories and hopefully that will lead to some more variety on the list but anyways guys if you are excited for my top 10 sneakers of 2020 make sure you smash that like button also if you're new to the channel make sure you do subscribe I do a lot of sneaker content a lot of how to cop videos for certain hyped up shoes just about every sneaker on this list I did have a how to cop video for so if you're interested in anything like that again make sure you do subscribe to the channel but all right, guys, we're going to jump right into this video. And coming in at the number 10 spot, we have the Yeezy Foam Runner. I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me on this one just because it's not the best looking shoe. But I'm not exactly basing this shoe on looks. This isn't the number 10 shoe because it looks so good. The reason I have this shoe at number 10 and the reason it's on this list is because it is very futuristic. And I feel like this is going to be the future of Yeezy, guys. This is apparently a very comfortable shoe. Unfortunately, I have not been able to try on a pair or even see them in hand, but I hear they're very lightweight, extremely comfortable. I've heard it's like walking on foam. These are also made from algae, which is crazy. I think a lot of Yeezys in the future are gonna be coming with these sustainable materials. Another reason that this is on the list is because it's the perfect quarantine shoe. And since it is 2020, I had to put at least one shoe like this on the list. Finally, the last thing I wanna mention about this shoe is that if you haven't heard yet, these are going to be mass produced very soon and they are going to sell for only $50. It's going to be part of Kanye's Gap deal. Right now, guys, they're reselling for a ton, more than like Jordan 1s, anything like that. But when these do end up being mass produced, when they're retailing for $50, bucks, i am definitely going to pick up a pair. Next up, guys, coming in at number 9, we have the Union Jordan 4s, particularly the Guava colorway. It's kind of this pinkish cream colorway. I actually had the privilege of getting these in hand and I actually gave a pair away this year. If you guys are interested in giveaways, make sure you do subscribe again. I'll be doing plenty more, probably 5,000, and if not, definitely 10,000. I'll be doing some big giveaways, so make sure you do subscribe again. But anyways, guys, like I said, I was able to get a pair of these for retail from the Union website. I got a size 8, which were not my size, but once I got these in hand, I wished they were my size because they were super clean in hand. I wasn't a huge fan of the black colorway. Again, though, this cream colorway is definitely a very solid shoe shoe. When I saw pictures of these, I wasn't really sold. I really didn't like them that much, but again, once I got them in hand, they were super clean, and I really wished I had gotten a pair in my size for retail. One notable feature about this shoe is that they do come with the adjustable tongue. It comes folded down, but you can remove some stitches and fold it up to reveal a regular Jordan 4 tongue. If I had got my size, which is a 9.5, I definitely would have removed those stitches and worn these like a regular Jordan 4, but again, guys, this is a super Super clean shoe I definitely prefer the cream colorway and that colorway in particular is gonna be my number nine shoe of 2020 next up we have a sneaker I know a lot of you guys are gonna disagree with me on and these are the tie-dye Jordan ones coming in at number eight these released in women's sizing so they do only go up to a size 10 and a half in men's I believe but this was a heavily underrated shoe guys they've been steady at around $300 for a long time now pretty much since summer and I've had my eyes on this shoe for for a long time again really considering picking up a pair because I think this is a super underrated sneaker I definitely see this jumping in price in the next couple months by next summer these will probably be a $350 $400 shoe I think just with all the Jordan 1 colorways that we had this year the Royals the court purples the mochas 
this shoe kind of got undervalued. A lot of people passed up on it. And another thing is that since it's women sizing, people with bigger size feet could not get their hands on a pair. So for that reason, it just wasn't as hyped up as it should have been. But this is my number eight shoe, guys. I think it's super clean. Definitely a great summer shoe, but I definitely think you can wear it in spring, fall again. It's very versatile. I really like that tie-dye design and it's definitely a sneaker I'm looking to add to my collection very soon. Now coming in at the number seven spot, we actually have a pack which will consist of two shoes. This is the New Beginnings pack, which does come with the Air Jordan 1 High and the Nike Air Ship. Both of these come in this red and white colorway, which is super clean. I believe the Jordan 1 actually comes with the original higher cut. And this is another shoe that was severely underrated, guys. I think just because it does cost so much and they were so limited, people really didn't get their hands on these. So that's why you didn't see a lot of people wearing them. But again, this is definitely an iconic pack. That classic red and white colorway is super clean. Moving on to number six, we have our first group of shoes, and this is gonna be the Nike Dunk. I'm talking about regular Nike Dunks, not SB Dunks, and we're gonna talk about both lows and highs. Right now, I have these Spartan Dunk Highs in hand. These are super clean. Dunk Highs were very underrated. Dunk Lows were pretty overhyped, in my opinion. This actually started last year at the end of the year when we had the off-white Nike Dunks. Those were regular Nike Dunks, not SBs. I know there's a lot of confusion between regular Nike Dunks and SBs, but pretty much, guys, this was originally a basketball shoe. SBs were originally skateboarding shoes. So yeah, we had the off-white collab last year, and then this year it started off with the Syracuse and Kentucky pairs. I actually had a pair of the Kentucky pairs that I paid about $250 for. I don't know why I did this, guys, but I ended up returning them because they had some very small defects, and I had actually bought them for personal and then kind of decided I didn't want them. I really wish I had held on to them, guys, because if you look at the prices now, that would have been a very good investment. But anyways, we've got a lot of different colorways of the Nike Dunk Low, couple different Nike Dunk Highs as well. In my opinion, I actually like the Dunk Highs more, although Nike Dunk Lows are much more hyped and sell for a lot more money. 2021, we're gonna be getting a lot more Nike Dunks, particularly these regular Nike Dunks, not SBs, and they're actually gonna be more widely available. They're gonna be available at places like Foot Locker, Foot Action, all those foot sites, Finish Line, as of 2020, they were mostly available at boutiques, very limited high-end retailers, but they're going to be much more widely produced. They're going to be available at more stores. So 2021, I think there'll be less hype surrounding Nike Dunks, but obviously a lot more people are going to have them. So I definitely think 2021 will be the year of the dunk, at least as far as people actually having them. 2020 was all about dunk hype. 2021 is going to be about these being an accessible shoe. I'll have a video in the next couple days going over a lot of these stuff dropping in 2021 as well as my January 2021 drop list. So if you are interested in that, make sure you do subscribe. But moving on from that, guys, coming in at spot number five, we have the off-white Jordan 5. Again, particularly this sale colorway. If you guys have been watching my channel, you know I definitely prefer white or sale shoes to black shoes, which is why I have this sale colorway on the list. The black colorway is not on the list. I thought those were trash but the sale colorway is much better these are super clean i'm really not a big off-white guy but i like what virgil did with these fives and i also like what he did with the fours which we will talk about later i thought he missed a lot this year the rubber dunks were trash couple other collabs that were trash but this was definitely a hit. This sale colorway with the black sole, that is clean. I really like this shoe, and this is one that even if it wasn't an off-white collab, I would definitely be a fan of. I think some people only like shoes because they're off-white or Travis Scott collabs, but this is definitely one that I think is super clean, and that is why I have it at number five on the list. Coming in at number four, we have the Mocha Jordan 1s. This was a very hyped up Jordan 1, probably one of the more hyped up Jordan 1s of the year. I think a large part of why it was so hyped up was because it does have some similarities to the Travis Jordan ones, but I think this shoe is great on its own. I honestly wish they didn't look like the Travis ones. I wish the Travis ones were a different color so that these would be more unique, but this is definitely a super clean shoe. I was actually able to get these for retail. I got two pairs for retail, sold one, and kept these. And as far as resale goes, I definitely think these are only going up from here. This will probably be a $600 shoe. I don't ever see it reaching a thousand, but it's definitely going to go up in price. So if you have pairs of these, 
make sure you're holding them. Moving on to spot number three, we have the Dior Air Jordan 1 Highs. This is another shoe that was almost completely unobtainable. I was not able to get my hands on a pair of these nor see them in person, but the fact that this was a collab with the high-end fashion brand like Dior and really just how iconic this shoe is just made me have to put it on the list, guys. These are also a really clean colorway. If these weren't a Dior collab, if they didn't have that Dior branding, these would still be reselling for a lot just because they are so simple, so clean, and a very easy shoe to wear with anything. Now, I would actually only buy these if I was like super rich. I don't think they're worth $10,000, guys. I don't think any shoe is really worth $10,000, but if I had a ton of money, all the money in the world, yeah, I'd probably pick up a pair, but I'd definitely pick up a lot of other pairs before I bought this shoe. Now coming in at number two, we have another off-white Jordan collab, the off-white Jordan Force, another sale colorway shoe. Sale was the theme of the year and these are super clean and I would definitely buy this shoe if I had the money. This is another shoe that if it weren't an off-white, it would still be up here on the list because it's a very clean colorway. Sometimes I wish shoes like these weren't off-white collabs just because I really like the look and if these weren't an off-white collab, I might actually be able to afford it guys. But anyways, again, this is just a a super nice shoe definitely a hit for Virgil on this one now moving on to the number one spot I'm sure a lot of you guys have guessed it we have SB dunks most of these shoes that resold for thousands of dollars the most profitable shoes this year were SB dunks we had these strange loves the Travis Scott's the reverse skunks we had a ton of heat coming from Nike SB this year strange loves back in February that kind of started off as well as the Travis Scott's I remember the Strange Loves were selling for around $500 and I was really considering buying them. I really wish I had now, guys, because I'm sure if you've seen the prices, you know those were a crazy good investment. Now, personally, I've actually had SB Dunks. I had the Para SB Dunks and I didn't really like the way they fit. I didn't like the big fat tongue. I prefer the regular Nike Dunks with their thinner tongue, but they definitely had some crazy designs from SB this year. I would say my favorite are probably the Strange Loves, then the Travis Scotts. Of course, I got to mention the Chunky Donkeys. I think those were insanely overhyped, guys. I was not a big fan of those. I would never wear them. I think they're pretty ugly, actually, but you got to give it to Nike SB. They came through. They had a ton of hype collabs. They were also supposed to have a 7-Eleven collab, which actually got canceled. If they had had that, guys, that would have been insane. It was definitely the best year Nike SB has had in a while. And for that reason, I do have to give the number one spot to the Nike SB Dunk, both lows and highs with the reverse skunks this year. Those were super clean, actually underhyped, even though they are selling for so much. But anyways, that's about it, guys. That's my top 10. Again, if you guys disagreed, let me know in the comments what your top 10 would be. I'd love to see all of that. But yeah, guys, 2020 was a great year for reselling and for the channel as well. 2021 we've got some big things coming i'm working on a cook group right now hopefully we'll keep making videos keep growing if you're not following the instagram the tiktok make sure you do all of that really appreciate that guys we got big things coming again want to thank you guys one more time for watching really appreciate it hope you like this video and until next time guys peace out